I'm going to recall this because I told a, a colleague of mine in the US that I was going to record it. So, and I'll put it on my website. I'll give it to Andy and do this. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, I think what I'm going to say will just echo everything that we've had already today okay, in so many ways. And it's, it's a real pleasure to have heard people speaking about their experiences because we think it's about our kids. It's actually about us. It's about who we are and what our children bring into our lives. And for me, that's the beginning point. It's actually about us. The pleasure that I get listening to Dante play, or I get listening to Rennie play, or any child. The pleasure I get when I see someone else take the next step. Because I, I've been teaching for a long, long time. And I've had the great good fortune of teaching so many different environments. Uh, I've taught uh, high school. I do the high schools. I've had kids throwing stuff across rooms and all the rest of it. Um, I've taught in uh, very different kinds of primary schools in rural Australia, in, in, main, in, in central Brisbane in, in Australia, where there were kids there that would actually destroy the whole room and we would have to walk out because certain of these children were deeply troubled, had um, uh, huge issues in their life. And, uh, so I've always had a very expansive vision of education and just seeing what that community can bring to us is really what I take as the greatest thing about this process. As Andrew said, it's not about the guitar. Not initially. It's about this process, this journey that we're on. And for me, that is where it begins. So it's all about us. So to do something different, because we, we tend to sort of stand, and I stand and go blah, 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 and I can do that for hours. Um, but I don't want to do that. I actually like to run a, a very small and short exercise with you guys, if you're open to that. Um, just to sort of change the dynamics a little bit. I want you to think for a moment about what music means to you. And I want you to find someone in the room that you don't know and actually share that experience. Just for a moment. It's a very new age sort of thing to do, I know. It's very but to me, I think it's really important that one, that we build the community through uh, encountering someone that we don't know. So that's a helpful exercise in itself. But also just to express something about what music means. Because that's the culture that we're using, the musical medium. In, in building this Suzuki world, the kind of future that Suzuki wanted and dreamt of and worked so hard for. And he lived to 99, so he, he worked for a long time. Just wanted, before we start, I'd just like to read you the quotation at the top. I know you've all read it, but we engage in human education through music. So it's not just education, it's human education. The Mommy, is really important. So we engage in this education so that children will grow beautiful hearts and high sensitivity. That means so much. The whole of his educational system comes from that one statement. And the beauty of that book that Andrew's pointing you all at is that there are five or six of those statements on every page. It's eminently quotable. And that book is something that you don't just read once. You think, oh, that's quite nice. It's it's a very simple Mommy. Like, from the heart. It wasn't being really intellectual. So it's very easy to kind of dismiss it as, oh, it's so simple. It makes so much sense. But you try and live it. You try and take it step by step into your life. That's it's been quite different. So I'm going to be quiet just for a couple of minutes and I'll let you find someone around the room. I'll just pause this. And after you've had that little conversation, then I'll sort of I'll go through my notes and give you a bit more on where I'm coming from, both as a parent but also as a teacher. Thank you very much. <laughs> Yeah.
So for me, it's about us, it's about you and I. Our kids are fine. If they're not fine at the end of the day, it's, it's because of us, because we projected our neuroses onto them. We've given them all our wounds and we transferred those wounds across. It's very, very sad. It's, it's the tragedy and the glory of being human. It's both of those things. And for me, that's really what we need to reflect on because you will be asked as parents, what are you doing with your child? You know the person across the fence or in the room in the, in the apartment next to you or whatever it is. We have fences in Australia, not apartments so much. But I mean, you know, that, that sort of thing. The person is, or, or your auntie or your own parents will say, what are you doing to your child? Homeschooling your child, it's madness. You know? They'll never fit in. They'll be mavericks all their lives. Or well, they just won't know what they need to go so that they can go out and be Rambo with a whole bunch of information and skills so that they can dominate the world like we've been taught to do. There's a domination model or there's a community partnership model. To get up and play and dominate the piano or the guitar, to dominate it. So much of traditional musical culture is about that domination. And for musicians, that wounds for many of us because there's only 0.001% chance for excellence. There's nothing else other than perfection. So you're on a CD somewhere and you're in the concert halls or you're just in the rubbish heap of history, you know. But that's not what it's about because really, music is about, it's a vehicle for us to express our humanity and our sensitivity. Just like art is, gardening is. Even the good part of all scientists are all about that. The great scientists and the great humans, the great human beings, they are the great human beings. And they're all working for that. So for me, I think what we're talking about here is culture, growing culture. And that is the most important thing before us, before our generation, and probably for the next two or three, four generations as we work out how to go to the next step of our civilization, a global world, what does that mean? How hard it is to live with people in your own culture, let alone having to live with people from other cultures, for instance. That's one step at a time. So we're learning very slowly the art of living together as human beings. And for me, that is the core business. So in my notes here, I've just been outlining that thought process, because as, as I say here, it's really important to know why we do what we do. To be able to justify helps us deal, one, with our own neuroses, one, with our anxieties. It also helps us deal with our mother-in-law, or you know, the way, you know, the person next door, or the person down the road, wherever it is. Okay, because they will be doubting, because that their identity gets threatened as soon as you do something different. As soon as we step out of the mold, all the people around us whose identities are invested in stability and order, you challenge them. Now, I know that at various times I've made certain choices in my life which have meant that I have lost two thirds of those people that were so called friends. You know, the true friends, of course, stay with you if you come hell or high water. But there are sort of socio ecological groups that sort of build around you. And they, they reflect back like these mirrors do. They reflect back to us who we are. But more importantly, because they really don't care who we are, we reflect them back to them. So when we start imagining and dreaming alternative futures, alternative possibilities for our children and their children, and so on, when we start sowing richer cultural um, seeds, when we sow those seeds, we're actually sowing a better and deeper future, a more robust, a more resilient future, because we're in for an interesting century, the century, 21st century. And we need resilient individuals, we need people with depth, the ability to reflect, the ability, as Michelle was saying, to step out of the frenzy and just be. Because when you play the guitar, the recorder, the banjo doesn't really matter what you but when you play it, if, you, if you're doing it authentically, you're playing it and just being. So there's an internal world that we're building. And we're building this uh, because we love our children. So it's, it's, it's 
to have a selfish project that we want. We're just doing it because I think it's all about us. But beyond that, if you can stretch the vision over the, over the years of your work, over reading Suzuki's book once or a year, it would be good, okay, uh, coming to these things, you start to see all the children in the families that you're co-traveling with, they're all blossoming in their different ways. Some will come and some will go. You know, one child will be doing guitar for two years and then go off and become a fantastic basketball. It doesn't matter what they become. It's that they've had that touch in that process. So for me, when we talk about culture, it's what we do in our day-to-day -day lives. And there are issues to do with rhythm and dynamics in those day-to-day -day lives. We all have such different lives in our world. There's so many different lives and there is no right or wrong answer. So for a very busy, busy parent, and I know this as a teacher, you know, sometimes they can only scrape 10 minutes a day to sit down with their child, if that. And when they do it, they probably had two arguments just to get to the chair and, and all the rest. And my job is not to be there as a judgmental teacher. It's actually to give them a context just to be, to find that 10 minutes in a day huge challenge for some of you. For, for others, it, it's other things. It's to do with structure or projecting your expectations. I want my child to be an A-class guitarist. That's not what we're here for either. Because it's not about that. You want your child to be. And one of the things that often we have to do, and this is part of this whole process of becoming, uh, is that we, we need to nurture ourselves. When we talk about music in the home, you've got to love music. Music feeds us. I know when I come back from having done lectures or something like that, I will put on some uh, some music that takes me somewhere else. Um, and that's part of a sort of a, a, a meditative home process. I love music. Dante, as I tell a little story here, you know, um, when he was two weeks old, I put on some Schubert. Fabulous Western composer and very subtle music. And Dante, two weeks went like that. And I looked at him and I thought, you know that. It, it, he responded to it immediately. Um, so to weave music, world music, not just classical music, weave all ranges of music into your life so that the child grows up with a broad lexicon. Because it is a language. The language is acquired through immersion, just like speaking English or Chinese or anything else. No one becomes fluent in a language by sitting down with a book. At some point, you have to go and live for a year in France or China or wherever it is to get that language. The same thing with music. Immersion is where it starts. So if you just listen to one style of classical music, let's say 19th century, orchestral stuff. You've got to broaden the palette. If you just listen to Led Zeppelin, you've got to broaden the palette. Okay, because it's all about developing a broad base, an oral cultural base. And what you'll find is that your child will develop their own taste within that. Dante, of his own volition, has certain composers that he loves. He's called his guitar Bach. Okay. He will get up in the best of moods if I put on, we've got a couple of bar CDs that he particularly loves. And he's loved them since the age of two or three. And it was immediately he will just get into this great mood. And he's a semi homeschooler kid because I'm lucky enough to have a high school starter school in Australia that he's enrolled in. And if he doesn't, if we don't want him to go to school, if he doesn't want to go to school, he just doesn't. And he will have whole days or, or even a whole week at home. Then he goes back. Because Dante is a little bit different. He gets quite stressed at times by large groups of people. Okay. And that's an emotional thing where he's quite poor. So to build his sense of self, he has to have the space when he's feeling strong and, and, and true. Like today, he just bounces in here. The other day, we had the play twinkle you know, to the group because he just wasn't there. He wasn't there. That's it. And I can't sit back at the parents' last teacher and go, oh my God, you're letting the side down. So you know, you <laughs> I've always been very light with him as a teacher. 
because I'm his parent. I've never pushed him at all. What I've been interested in is solid sound and just enjoyment on the instrument. And sometimes he gets up and he plays and the sound is just awesome. Uh, so he's he's his own person. He's driving his own thing. And I've asked him, "Do you want to keep playing the guitar?" And he says, "Yes." Just like Ben just wants to keep playing. Okay. Um, so what do we do? Well, we, there are certain kinds of coordinates on a culture map. Okay, and I've mapped them out on this list on the other page here. You know, which are just dot points. But they dot points. You can each you can have each one of these. Could be the theme of a whole afternoon talk. Okay, that's very enormous. You know, love in life. We've already mentioned love a few times. Sensitivity, tenderness. But love in life. What does that mean? To do Suzuki calls called nurtured by love. Well, it means the ability to be present to life. That's why I've always felt it to be. Because we're so often not. We're so often already thinking about the next job, or what someone said to me yesterday that hurt my feelings or made me angry or whatever, okay? We're so often not in the present. So to be in the present, love is a form of attention. Okay? And one of the things, if we, if we want to teach them, we know attention deficit is considerably high on the scale at the moment. Why? Because there's so much stimulus. Now, if you go back a century, or you just go to some place outside of the urban environment, Now, I, it took me two and a half days to post a parcel from rural India to Australia. <laughs> Guy sitting in a little treadle thing, sewing up the packet, you know. And it, it took him half an hour just to wax seal with red sealing wax. You know, every day I just, just, just be. Because that's the pace they want to use. And it's a wonderful thing. Children will often go at that pace, as long as they don't get too much stimulus. So uh, we have to allow that. So love is a form of attention. We pay attention to those that we love. I'm going back to apologise to your husband. Okay. But it's also attention to our needs, to who we are. Because we can't be effective if we are totally running on empty all the time. One of the things, and this is true for any, any kind of parent-child relationship. To fill yourself up, if you're full, if you're overflowing with the love of music or whatever, if you if you go and join a choir, if you can't play an instrument, go and join a choir or something. Um, that's a great way to express yourself. Or if it's not you, if you know you, you love music but you, you think I can't sing, you know, I sound like a pro, then draw, paint, garden, be creative in whatever means. Because creativity is one way to express your love of the world. That's the way I've always... If I get tired because I've done marked, because I'm marking now, a heap of essays, you know, it's very left brain, as yang as anything, you know, and I just have to go... I sat with Dante this morning in Drew. Okay, so it's not just the guitar. Sometimes I have to write to express myself. So it's not, it's not linear. It's none of that. So we've got love on the recipe book, we've got uh, rhythm, acknowledge rhythm. Sometimes a week will go by and you might only practice twice because something is happening in your life. If that's the case, don't beat yourself up about it. Now I've been doing uh, yoga for over 40 years now and, and asanas, those exercises that everybody associates with yoga. Some days you do them, some days you don't because of whatever. It's the same thing with playing the guitar. Some days you do it, some days you don't. Don't be judgmental. But one thing that well, most of us are really good at is beating ourselves up about being lousy parents or just lousy guitarists because you don't play enough or, you know, I, did, I should meditate more or I should do this, I should, 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 should. Okay? So acknowledge rhythm. Take joy in what you do. Take joy. So joy in life. If you are happy, you're teaching your kids to be happy. If you're dead serious, sour, toxic, you're teaching your kids to be just that. That's, that's what they learn. They learn, they want copy, just as the mother tongue. Well, the mother tongue is not just music, it's not just language, it's the whole of your emotional aura that you exude as a family. If your family is stressed, you've got to work out ways to these stress. Okay? Because that is, you're teaching them. 
So remember, find ways to be happy, to joy, follow your bliss, as somebody said in the 60s. Okay? So music is life. And I say that in a poetic, metaphorical sense, because life is just full of sounds, bird songs. And the great thing, I'm living on Nanyan campus, and I wake up every morning, I can still hear birds like I do in Australia. Okay? So learn about music. Now that's something that you can do, and you can be more in control of. You're on a musical journey. I remember when I started really exploring music, I was 12, 13, 14. Uh, my family had had a few classical records and a few other kinds of music. We didn't have very much of it. It was me who took my family on a learning journey. So I, I started listening to um, the Australian Broadcasting Commission's classical morning show. Because they played five, ten snippets, you know, the, the, the short snippets of, of Bach, or Telemann, or Beethoven, or Schubert, right through the 20th century and going right back, okay? And I would play a game of, what period is that? What might the composer be? You know, those sorts of games. I, I did develop this myself because there was no one, I was in a semi vacuum But yeah, you can bring a lot of musical awareness, you talk about music, you can go and read about it, you can find out about Beethoven on the, on the internet, and you can just tell one or two stories. And there are great children's books too on, on the composers. The books on the world, so these are the Western composers, but this is the tradition that the guitar sort of rooted in anyway, and our harmonic system is rooted in. So you can give the kids a sense of who they are that's outside of just this thing, flat land and temporal zone that we live in. We, you know, we live in a permanent present at the moment. We, you know, the past is you know, just on the drive, plus yourself in the future. Well, that hopefully is going to be like today, isn't it? So to learn about music, and so go through the eras, world music, great composers, wonderful pieces, great musicians, etc. Uh, sometimes I'll go on to YouTube and find some new young pianist or guitarist, someone I've never heard of, and I'll and I'll show them playing something. Where, uh, March 26, that's the date that Beethoven died. Um, so I uh, on March 26, I pulled up on YouTube the Pathetic Sonata and a few others. It's beautiful. Piece. Moonlight, those sorts of starters. And I found some young um, American girl, to be about 20, 21, who's just getting ready for her first performance in, um, what's the, in, in a, uh, I can't remember the name of the, it's, a, it's, it's the most famous performance place in England, in London. Albert Hall, thank you. In the, in the Albert Hall, okay. Now, so she was, she's going to be performing there, I think, in July or something like that. So I, and I just put it on the back and I told Dante, it's is Beethoven's death day, happy death day to you. <laughs> so it's, but we celebrated Beethoven because we could. And, and Bach was also born in March. Well, so talk about music and reflect. Life, this life, talk about it. Life is an art form, not out of habit. Okay? Uh, discipline, now that's really important because our parents are always saying, well, how do I get my child to play? And is it that we lean on them? You know, in that traditional music practice sense, you know, where the parent says, okay, you've got, you're 12 now, you can do half an hour a day. And uh, that's, you know, and the kids said it was hot. And you know, as soon as it finished, thank God, I'm going to go out and play football or whatever it is. Okay. But what does discipline mean? Well, it means loving structure. That's what it means to me, loving structure. And that loving structure we can give a child, and we give it by being okay about life as it is, listening to the rhythms, but also creating opportunities for the child to play. Now, a child may or may not go and get the guitar. So Dante's ball sometimes go and get his guitar and play on his own. Benjamin sounds like he does the same thing, and maybe Reddy does. But not all kids do. It doesn't mean they don't want to. It may well mean that they're just too busy doing other things. So then you factor it in. Right? So I often say to Dante, okay, I come back from the university, I say, Dante, do you play guitar today? And yes or no. And if it's no, I say, okay, you want to watch that program, it's the crazy cartoon thing you've been watching there, and suddenly discovered it. Okay, well, you've got to sit down, and I want to hear you play this, this, and this. Just, just for me, I'll be making myself a cup of tea, and I'll come and sit down, and I'll listen to what you play to me, because I just need to listen to it. And he'll, he'll, he won't even back up, he'll just do it. So it's kind of not creating uh, a pressure or a weight, 
out of something that we love. Okay, because as soon as something becomes a duty, you've immediately stepped out of your relationship to it. And these uh, and music is part of our uh, relational network. It's an emotional thing that we engage in. It's, it's, it's expression. So for me, discipline, think about it as a loving structure. So it's that you do find the space to do the things that we know to lead to success. Because one of the things that's obvious about anything in life, success breeds success. When a kid feels, yes, I can pay this, I can do this, they'll keep on doing it because it builds their self-esteem. Play music every day when possible, when possible. Slow time, I'm really, really good on slow time. You know, when I was an undergraduate, we had a whole year to study something in history or philosophy. We wrote one essay at the end of that year, maybe an exam, and did a tutorial presentation. Now I've got 13 weeks, there are three simple trimesters and all that sort of stuff, and everything's pressure. Okay, and we tend to do, think the same thing for, for our kids. We kind of project it into our lives. So don't take that time. Make slow time. Make time where kids can just dream. Because a lot is happening in there that you cannot read on the outside. A lot of integration work. Sometimes Dante plays best when he has to play the guitar for two days. Because he's just, he comes back to it and it's exciting. I love this piece, and you just play it. Oh, you know, it's no perfect, it's the, the dynamics are there, he's actually really listening. Okay. So that's really important. Getting to the end of the list, and then I'll be quiet. Um, trust, I've already touched on that one, it's so important to trust and to celebrate. You know, So much in life, um, we take um, we take for granted. We, we, the, the world we live in is the one that is very much dominated by the ordinary. We don't exceptionalise things unless it's going to make lots of money on the television, you know, whether you're going to be an exceptional sports star or an exceptional actor. You know, we exceptionalise things that can become commodity producers, that produce what we value in terms of currency. But we don't exceptionalise the ordinary. But it's in the ordinary, the beauty of the ordinary, the everyday, the life story. I mean, we get to 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 years of age and we, and we drop dead, right? Okay? Most of our life, even the most exceptional lives, have been filled with 99.9% ordinary. How do we make that extraordinary? How do we live in the moment with that attention and love and sense of presence that makes the ordinary exceptional? Because it really is. The ordinary is the fact that we have this world, this incredible world, that we take for granted. We walk down a city street and we think, oh God, I can't wait to get out and get home, or I'm looking forward to that. And we're not looking at the street and thinking. Because as a, as a cultural theorist, and that's really where I am, I sit between history and the future, and I do both, and I use philosophy. As a cultural theorist, you look at this world, and you look at any world that's ever been created by human beings, and it's all absolutely incredible. It doesn't matter whether we're looking at an indigenous culture, we're looking at, because I, I just spent four weeks wandering around rural India with my wife in Dante. We look at those cultures. We look at the most mundane uh, Australian suburban culture. Uh, okay, you I mean, it tends to be, but you know, it's still, you look at the achievements in the simplest of things. And they're all celebrations, as long as we say, this is special, the more attention we can give. So I'm going to be quiet. I just thank you very much. I've had a bit of a ray, but to me, this is really what it's all about. So we're growing new consciousness, new culture. We're sowing the seeds for a better, healthier, more uh, community, collective, partnership type oriented future. One that's not so competitive, not so intense. That's, it's going to be an amazing future, that's guaranteed. No matter what happens and which way it goes, it's going to be incredible. But we want to know that for our children, that they can maximise. Who they are. To me, that's the real way.